So we're talking about Germany again, because Germany almost faced a blackout earlier this month, and that was because of doldrums. Doldrums are also known as Dunkelflautes in Germany. And Dunkelflautes are basically periods of time when there's a, a lot of cloud cover, but there's almost no wind. So you don't have solar power and you don't have wind power. So what are we going to do in this video? I'm going to show you what is wrong with the energy wende, why natural gas won't save Germany, how closing nuclear was the biggest mistake they ever made, and why renewables aren't good enough. So now it's irony time because I'm going to read you something that was written by the CEO of RWE. It's basically the company that produces the most electricity from coal in Germany. They have the lignite power plants. They have the anthracite coal power plants that are concentrated around the Ruhr area. So that's the largest industrialized and most heavily populated area in Germany. And, and they simply feed it with coal. They also have some wind and solar, you know, in order to uh, keep up appearances that they care. But they are basically a coal firm. And yes, they do still own a little bit of nuclear, especially in the Netherlands with our little 485 megawatt pressurized water reactor which is partly owned by rwe but rwe really really is an anti-nuclear organization so coming from this person is pretty rich because he should have been advocating for keeping open the nuclear power plants but he didn't so let's see what he has to say today at the beginning of this month the power supply in germany reached its limits in the evening hours of november 6th the price of electricity rose extremely quickly and extremely sharply to more than 800 euros per megawatt hour this made it about 10 times more expensive than normal there was a short protest and i don't know what they mean by protest this is probably something in the translation it is incorrect but it did not reverberate for long in the meantime the whole thing was more than just a warning shot phases in which sun and wind produce only limited electricity so-called dark doldrums or dunkel flautes are something quite normal they happen again and again and so we have to be prepared to ensure stability after all these very high prices are an absolutely certain indication of the state of affairs with regard to security of supply in germany if these prices spike up to 800 euros per megawatt hour chances are that you are creeping up towards a blackout there's simply not enough power to satiate the demand there's so much demand out there on the net that you need to have all your electricity production running flat out in order to make sure that you meet the demand. And once the demand outstrips your capability to deliver, then you get a blackout. Then basically your electricity system says, bye, I'm gone. And everybody sits in the dark at home, except for those who have power walls or people who own generators like hospitals, you know. Those are the exceptions, but most people will be out of electricity. So let's continue. Um, they are the result of this shortage of supply. So let's take a look at the figures from November 6th. The month was around 66 gigawatts and it was covered by domestic production around 53 gigawatts and imports around 13 gigawatts. Almost the entire domestic supply was available. As for the import capacity, only 3 gigawatts of the interconnector capacity was not available. In concrete terms, this means that the same situation would not have been manageable on another day with higher peak load. For example, in January, the highest electricity demand of the year was on 15th of January. It was more than 75 gigawatts and thus almost 10 gigawatts more than on November 6th. And in Germany, we have been acting as if the issue of adding secure power is something that can be postponed. And this is rich coming from somebody who did not keep his nuclear power plants on. Why didn't you, Marcus Kreber? Why, did you, why didn't you tell Germany that they were making a critical mistake in closing more than 10 gigawatts of nuclear power since 2014? Well, let's continue. We can already see very clearly what happens when the power is turned off and there is no backup for renewables. No, 
we no longer have the time. On the contrary, time is running out and the expansion is running out and not only since this month. So first, let's see what the Germans have done since 2014. This is a graph that I made with data from energy, uh, energycharts.de. The blue line is, this, is basically the, the capacity of dispatchable power that you have. The orange line is the capacity of non-dispatchable power that Germany has. Now, as you can see, they have invested a lot on wind and solar, and they think that that's a good, a good thing to do, because obviously you need to decarbonize, and the only way to decarbonize, according to a lot of these people who are in power, is to build as much wind and solar as you can. But, you know, doldrums, dunkelflautes, all those things, they do exist, and they do happen. So even if you have 168 gigawatts, which they had on November 6th, they, they, I mean, they almost had, they almost had a blackout because it wasn't windy and because there was a lot of cloud cover. These are dark days in Germany at the end of the year. It's that simple. Winter is a real thing. It, it, it happens. So they have 90 gigawatts of dispatchable power available to them, which means basically in Germany at this moment, anthracite coal, late night, natural gas, and then there's a little bit of biomass in there. Now, this is another uh, graph that I made. Um, I used the data from the same website. So what you see is that the max load has always been, you know, between 80 and 90 gigawatts. That's the max load that they have during a year. Uh, one, you know, a couple of a couple of days during the year, they have this this peak load of, uh, let's say, eighty gigawatts. And this this year, the max load was eighty one point three gigawatts. Last year, the, the max load was seventy nine point two gigawatts. Now, the interesting bit is the max import tells you something about the maximum amount of electricity that they can import from their neighbors, France in particular, where they import a lot of nuclear energy from. So in 2015, this was 6.8 gigawatts. They didn't need as much import then as they need now. But now that number has risen to 17.1 gigawatts. So what I always say is that Germany is an energy vampire simply because they have invested so much money in renewables. They neglected to keep their nuclear power plants online. They neglected to plan out new nuclear power plants, which basically means that you have to build or you have to rely on the juice that your neighbors can support. So this is basically what you see. Now, the maximum difference between the max load and the max import, that's basically that's basically the, the, the volume of dispatchable power that you really need, that you must have in order to make sure that you can meet the demand. And this is, God's willing, that, for instance, France doesn't say, well, sorry, we need to power ourselves. You know, or the Netherlands says, no, 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 we can't help you with, with, with your power problems today, or Poland does the same. So in theory, 64.2 gigawatts of dispatchable power in Germany would be able to power their economy. But also what is interesting over here is uh, the green line that I've drawn here in the red line, that's the max import versus the nuclear. The nuclear is the green line. You can see that they cross each other and they mirror each other almost, right? So in 2022, 2023, and 2024, they are almost an exact mirror match of each other. So this, this basically highlights that Germany was not basically intending to build all the capacity that they needed in order to make sure that they could buffet the, 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 the shortfall of the nuclear that wasn't there anymore. They were simply going to rely on their neighbors of bailing them out whenever the power wasn't there. Now over here is another graph. This is, this is the doldrum area. Uh, we're talking about, let's see, what did I select? Week 43. Um, let's see, I selected week 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48. So these are the weeks that le lead up until today. Now, unfortunately, let's, let's see if I can uh, reframe this a little bit better. There you go. So what you have over here, the blue, that is the demand. You can see the, the, the demand rising up to... Uh, let's see, the highest point is almost 80 gigawatts during this period. So it varies from 
uh, let's say the lowest point somewhere around 55. These are the weekends, right? Weekend, 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 right? Weekend, weekend, weekend. Again, you see the weekends, the demand is lower than during the weekdays when industry is operational and when, when a lot of people are working, then regularly, then the demand is roughly 70 gigawatts, right? That that That's around where it should be. And then there's a Friday over here. You can see that the demand is slightly lower than 70 gigawatts. And over here, there is a Friday when uh, apparently everybody is free. I don't know what is happening, but generally you can see it. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, you can re you can really read uh, what day of the week it is based on this graph. Now, the red line, which is uh, flying up and down like crazy, that's the the aggregate of the wind and solar uh, capacity that is being put that is actually producing power at that time and what you see over here during this you know it's it's almost in the middle this is a doldrum right uh wind and solar have bailed out they still produce a little power but it's not it's not enough to 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 reach it, to make sure that uh, germany doesn't get a blackout now the green part you know the green graph that you see down here in the bottom that's the import balance right so right now they are actually importing so during this doldrum over here they are importing electricity and there's even small moments when they actually export a little electricity but that's exporting electricity that they produce using coal or using gas or using biomass so over here you can see this here is a telltale uh, sign that uh, renewables simply aren't enough um, so, so this is basically uh, what is going wrong in Germany. So let's go to uh, another uh, interesting website over here. So this map over here, I, I hope it's. I hope you can, uh, you can, you can see what it does, right? This is basically the same map, but this is from energy energy charts dot info. And what I've done here is I've selected nuclear, I've selected offshore wind, I've selected onshore wind, and I selected solar. And the problem here is that this is 20, 2015. So back then they didn't have as much wind and solar. They did have a sizable uh, portion of nuclear, as you can see. So nuclear was somewhere around 10 and a half, 11 gigawatts of power, a sturdy power that they could get whenever they need it so if we go up to 2020 for instance it takes it takes a little while to load unfortunately it's a lot of data that they want to see uh, that they want to show you so what you see over here uh nuclear still at eight gigawatts wind and solar uh, are actually uh, producing a lot more but again you can see those doldrums over here as well this is 2020 again a doldrum period over here there's some doldrums over here let's go to 2022 shall we believe that this is the last year when there was still some uh, nuclear electricity on the uh, market over here so again same thing over here you know 2022 again a doldrum yes there is still some wind over here and still some wind over here but you can see it becomes less and less and less and less and less and that's the moment when you basically uh, get into trouble because you really need all the capacity that you that, that you have at your disposal in order to make sure that your grid actually functions over here you can see uh clear signs of doldrums as well this is in january and february and the interesting bit is during the summer you get the same problem wind goes a wall for a long time you still have a lot of solar uh, solar power because obviously the days are you know there's almost no clouds uh, the days are very sunny you have maximum irradiance which means that your your solar powers are producing at an optimal rate but only during the day so what are you going to do during the night obviously the demand will uh will 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 drop because people go to sleep but there's still a lot of industry that is active uh, during the, the, these days now one of the the quintessential problems that we're we are facing right now is that with these uh increased insecurities with these increased prices the fact that natural gas is becoming more expensive each year as the carbon tax gets added uh, coal uh, gets more expensive each year uh, this brings us into dangerous 
territory. So what I have over here, right? This is a, uh, it's not a good chart. Let, let me, let me just uh, zoom into the numbers here. Uh, that's better. Let's, let's see. So let's see. Okay. So over here we have our non-dispatchable electricity sources, right? Here we have nuclear. That is something that we really don't want to, uh, to, to mess with. Uh, then we get biomass, which I personally believe is not low carbon. And then we have lignite, coal, and uh, oil and gas. Now this is a little bit red, I believe. Let, let, let me let me change that into a different color. It doesn't matter, right? Let's let's make it blue, so so that we we, we know what we're doing. So let's see. Gas was twenty nine gigawatts in twenty fourteen, and now it's thirty six point three. Uh, lignite and coal they went down from forty six to about thirty two ish uh, gigawatts, right? So th it is great. They they managed to. Uh, kill some of their lignite and they've managed to add you know roughly seven gigawatts of gas now if you take this all together right so let's 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 do this at this moment right now right let's add these together well it doesn't matter how we do it i can do a sum because nuclear is zero anyway right so what you get is 82 gigawatts of dispatchable power uh, there's also some hydro uh, hydro there so maybe we can make it 90 right it's it's 90 gigawatts all right so you have 178 gigawatts of renewables over here uh, but you say okay listen we really need to get rid of this fossil fuel uh, electricity power generation right this is this is the big problem the biomass the lignite the hard cold oil and the gas right so the, tr the question is what are you going to do, Germany? Are you going to close your 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 fossil fuel, your 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 coal plants? Are you going to close thirty two gigawatts of coal capacity during this time? Um, what are you going to do in order to make sure that you can justify closing, you know, thirty two gigawatts of coal fired uh, capacity? Uh, you can add as much renewables as you want, but Remember, we were we were we were talking about the the, the Dunkelflaut. We were talking about the doldrums. Whatever you do over here can only be solved in this column. It cannot be solved in this column. This is a fundamental thing that people do not understand about these so-called energy transitions. They want this to be able to overtake this. Uh, in order to do this, you need three or four, maybe even five times the capacity that you have today because you need to put it into backup somehow. That backup can be batteries. That ba backup can also be power to gas, you know, uh, making hydrogen gas or making some other type of gas, then burning that again in some kind of a, of a gas-fired power plant. But you only have 36.3 gigawatts. So at this moment, we have reached the stalemate point. This is what I believe is actually the point of no return. Right now, Germany is basically being caught in its own trap. There's, there's only, there's, you can double down, which means that you need to build a lot of natural gas plants, but keep your coal-fired power plants operational for as long as possible. This means that you need to somehow circumvent the trouble that arises from the carbon tax that, that's incoming from the European Union. This, uh, if you don't do that, the other option that you have is to close industry. Simply make sure that your industry can't compete anymore. Close them down. Close your steel mills. Close your, 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 blast, your blast furnaces. Uh, close your aluminium, don't produce any cars anymore. That's the alternative. So right now, this is the stalemate point. I do believe that at this at this moment, we are at a make or break time. On December 2nd, I will release a video in which I outline my plan for Germany, what I would do if I were, you know, Schultz or whoever gets elected next year uh, when they have elections. I, I I think that you can imagine what the uh, what the solution will be, and I, I I truly believe that that is the only solution that is left to Germany. If they double down, if they they double down on the on the renewable hubris, 
if they believe that they can keep their lignite, their hard coal and their gas uh, operational for as long as possible, their economy is going to tank so hard, it's going to cause uh, massive economic disruptions. And it's actually something that I don't want to see happen, but I guarantee you that it will happen. So with that, you've made it to the end of this video. If you want to support the channel, uh, please go to my Patreon page and become a paying member. Uh, if you have something to add to the discussion, please, please leave a comment down in the comment section. If you haven't already, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.